Jacques Michel, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, indeed, I will take uh, another angle to complement what uh, has been said before. Uh, as a practitioner on the ground, um, I will draw the first lessons of this pandemic, even though uh, this uh, unprecedented and disruptive period is not over. And also, um, I will make a focus on the Gulf economies, and we have been in Abu Dhabi for two, two, uh, two days, and I believe for the participants, it would be of interest to uh, uh, give some highlights about the, under the control of Abdelaziz, uh, the, the, the main trends uh, related to the Gulf economies. First of all, uh, as mentioned and underscored by Abdelaziz, uh, the pandemic has been a catalyst in many fields, okay, an accelerator. And uh, internally, indeed, we intensify digitization, we intensify automation, industrialization of processes, new ways of working. And for a corporate investment banking platform, it's not easy to ask a trader or a fixed income sales to work from home requires security protocols, a lot of IT support. So we have been agile, anticipatory, we have been resilient. So uh, on the CIB segment and as a whole, uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, BNP Paribas, like many other global banks, uh, perform well, weather pretty well the, the, the storm. Uh, we exercise our social and civil responsibility by supporting the real economy, uh, uh, adhering to some programs put in place by the policy makers. Uh, but also, uh, we exercise diligence, uh, selectiveness, uh, strong uh, uh, discipline at origination, um, anticipation, portfolio management, so we could, in short, weather the crisis so far uh, well. And we uh, accelerated some uh, changes uh, internally, notably uh, digitalizations. As far as the Gulf economies are concerned, um, of course, it has been disruptive. SME segment, uh, individual, uh, uh, have been much impacted. But overall, the combination of massive support packages in the region, okay, with um, very low, extremely low interest rate and markets flush with liquidity, uh, made uh, 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 I would say, uh, possible um, uh, financial stability uh, across the board in the Gulf uh, countries. Okay. And some of them uh, took the opportunity to pursue some uh, structural reform, uh, tax uh, reform. I would like, uh, and bon, despite all these uh, support measures, uh, as uh, you know, uh, the Gulf countries in 2020 um, where in reception and the recession and the GDP contact, contracted by 5.3% in average. I would like to highlight also um, the amount of debt raised by, uh, by the Gulf countries, which is something new. In fact, uh, we are in a new paradigm since 2015, when the oil, pi oil prices dropped by uh, more than 50% and the Gulf countries came to the loan and the bond market. And we'll focus on the bond market. During, between 15 and today, the Gulf countries, the six GCC countries, raised $390 billion debt on the bond market. Okay? 2020 has been a record year with $107 billion bonds. Year to date, $77 billion bond for the six GCC countries. So which make within the emerging market space, the GCC as the most vibrant uh, segment. Uh, and due to massive liquidity, uh, all the transactions, mainly for the sovereign, but this year in 21, for the first time, for the large GREs and large uh, the corporates, all these transactions have been massively oversubscribed with no, whatever the underlying asset, whatever the rating of the sovereign, investment grade or non-investment grade, 
no pricing differentiation. And I'm afraid that the party might be over soon. This will be my first message. Uh, so far, the Gulf countries have benefited from a very, very conducive environment and could tap successfully uh, uh, the bond market and borrow money, of course, at a very low uh, cost of uh, funding. And another characteristic still under control, uh, indebtedness, uh, debt to GDP increase. Uh, in the case of uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, started from nil in 14 to 31 percent to their GDP, and the weaker economy, Oman and uh, Bahrain, we are uh, above uh, 75 or 100 percent debt compared to GDP. So there is this new trend which has been uh, amplified by the uh, pandemic since uh, definitely the, the countries had to uh, finance uh, their COVID relief packages, uh, notably, and their capex. So uh, what are the prospects and the, the challenges ahead? Um, all markets uh, constitute the main uncertainty, and uh, these economies have been very dependent on and still dependent on the oil market. Even though uh, <coughs> the uh, estimates for 21 are quite positive, uh, at 75 and above, um, the observers and the experts anticipate, uh, anticipate for 2022 uh, a decline in uh, the, 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 the oil market. So I would say um, the rebound uh, in the GC country will be of limited amplitude. Uh, for 2022, uh, the rebound, the economic growth in average is, has been estimated to 2%, 2.2% only. Okay. It will take time before uh, the market sentiment and the businesses come back to, to normal. But I would say there is a new paradigm, a new normal appearing, new priorities. And uh, definitely, energy transition and ESG requirements are becoming top priorities across the board among the sovereign, the sovereign funds, uh, the large corporates. And um, market perception might change rapidly, um, and notably vis-à-vis uh, hydrocarbon intensive economies, they have a, a long way to go. Uh, policy makers, uh, stakeholders are very much aware that it is of critical importance uh, that they have to put in place robust uh, ESG uh, frameworks. Uh, but uh, uh, many banks sign the net zero banking alliance and so they will have uh, to reduce progressively their exposure on the oil and gas sector, okay? So I would say um, access to uh, uh, the loan or the bond market might be more difficult. Uh, investors might be more selective, more choosy. Um, lenders will try to identify the winners of tomorrow and to phase out their exposure from what they consider the losers of tomorrow in that respect, in, in terms of uh, energy uh, transition. So I would say um, a sensitive uh, uh, period, um, new priorities, a new normal is appearing. And um, for the weakest economies, uh, non-investment grade, we might be faced one day to a kind of liquidity squeeze or credit uh, crunch. So um, major challenge ahead. Um, but what is positive, uh, all these countries are very much aware of this uh, new paradigm and uh, new constraints related to uh, energy transition. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jacques. That was very, very interesting also, and I, I could say that uh, you identify a number of issues that are, of course, of uh, uh, great importance, and I could see 
the body language of Abdulaziz from time to time.